Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I had a user ask for help on a project. I did a little bit of legwork. I've got some tips. So let's get cracking. So, friends, this is a beetle grid. The idea is to have these holes so that the eggs that are laid fall through, and that way you can collect them. The problem the user had is that there are so many pieces grouped, and you can see there are little pieces of groupings here where the user was trimming things instead of designing precisely. So this is one of the things I learned when I first started too. I would do things with brute force. If I wanted a peg, I would design a peg. If I needed to take off a corner, I'd throw in a rectangle, I'd trim off a corner. Well, the more you play, the more you learn about precision and your designs are more efficient. So this also has 2,500 pegs. So it just totally crushes Tinkercad and they're grouped and grouped and grouped and grouped. So what you need to start thinking of when you build with Tinkercad is think of each grouping as a backpack. So if you've had several groups in one backpack, that's a decent, efficient way to carry stuff. But if you have groups that have groups that have groups, well, all of a sudden you've got backpacks holding backpacks holding backpacks, and that's what slows down and eventually crashes Tinkercad. So I fiddled with this and I ended up losing and I came up with another way to build it. Let me show you another program that is super smart for building that grid on the bottom. Friends, we are gonna visit my.sketchup.com. This is a totally different company, so I'm sorry to mix companies, but sometimes knowing the right tool for the job makes all the difference. I'm gonna do create new and I'm gonna do millimeters. So when you open Tinkercad, it looks kind of fun. This one is pretty stark when you open it, and it's confusing when you're trying to learn what to do. I've used it a while, so I know that you click and release. Right now I clicked the mouse, I stretched it out, and now I'm gonna type the numbers that I need. It was 205 and then comma, and it was 167. And when I press enter, it snaps to those sizes. That's one of the awesome things about this. It also has a built-in tape measure. So I wanna round these corners. I'm gonna move in 10 millimeters. Once again, you just type in thin air. It shows me I'm on the green axis. I press enter. I'm gonna go in 10. I'm gonna go down 10 on that green axis and press enter. I'm gonna move over to the arc tool. And when you click this corner, click that point, I can round off that edge. I'm gonna do it on this side so you can see it better. If I miss, I miss, so I'm gonna hit escape. So it clicks, I'm gonna move out to that spot, and I'm gonna click and round off those corners. This was one item I noted was in the user's design. So I'm gonna use the eraser to cut off those ends, and you can see this looks just like what the user had, except I don't have the holes. Real quickly, I'm gonna use the fit view, pop. Zoom out a couple clicks. I'm gonna go to the guideline tool, and I'm gonna move this in six millimeters. So I just type six and press enter, six and press enter, six and press enter. And up here, I'm gonna go seven and press enter. And then I need a circle. Well, once again, click and find your circle tool. I'm gonna to zoom in on this location and it's asking me for the radius. I want the radius to be one. I need to cut out the middle, I'm scrolling in so I can see that. When I've got the middle selected, you'll see it has those dots and I can hit delete. I'm gonna select the outside edge and I'm gonna hit M for move. I'm gonna grab the center of that location and notice I am moving it. If I tap control, it is in copy mode. I'm gonna zoom in over here and click to set it down. And then friends, I'm gonna hit the divided by key and I'm gonna put 50 and press enter it instantly divides and places all the way across the screen. That's one of the most awesome things about using SketchUp. I want them all the way up the front, so watch this. I'm gonna select all the way across, but I'm missing this end. That allows it to not select any of these edges. You need to totally have something in your selection box to select it. Once again, I'm gonna do M for move, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find the center of this little line or this circle. And now when I tap control, it'll be moving a copy. And then I'm gonna go up here and click and set it down. Once again, without touching anything else, I'm gonna do divided by and type 45. If you look down here on the right, you'll see that show up by distance. I'll put an arrow so you can see it. When I press enter, this is where it gets funky. 
uh, you need to learn to be patient. So I hit the button and now I'm waiting for it to do all the math to put those circles in there and cut the holes out. Notice it does this wait thing. I probably had to do this 15 times last night to finally get my finished part, but it's still so much faster than any other online tool I've found for making something like this. Now, if you had the desktop version, that would work pretty slick. But with a web version, it's just insane that I made this even happen, I think. So now this is the push-pull tool. If you click this and lift up, it will lift that up to make the shape that we need. I want to make it two millimeters, so I'm going to press two and enter. And now once again, I'm going to have to go through several of those weight screens to let it finish and assemble the part. <laughs> Here's the first of those weight screens. And I'm not going to show all these, but I'm going to tell you, I, last night I bet you I waited 15 minutes just going between clicks and between clicks and between clicks. But I ended up with a part that I could save. I'm going to warn you there, I also had to wait on the export as an STL screen. Now when I was done, the STL for this design was only 13 kilobytes. So it is an efficient design. It's just pretty intense for SketchUp's online version to solve all the math in this shape through a web browser. All right, friends, I have paused and I'm doing the weights without you. I just had my seventh weight. Once again, you gotta take time and believe. This is so cool that it is building this in a free web-based app, but you gotta be patient if you're ever gonna try something like this. <laughs> Whew, uh, just short of 30 clicks, it is done. Uh, you can see here I clicked the display. I was thinking about switching to wireframe, uh, so that may speed it up. These are things you learn as you play. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to save it so I don't lose it. When you save, I choose the SketchUp save location, and then I'm just going to name it Beetle 2, because I already made it once, but I want to prove to you that you can save it. And then, friends, once it's done saving, what you do is you click on this one, and you export as an STL. Now, when I did this, I had to wait and click and click and click and click to get my STL. I'm not going to show you that on video. I'm just going to show you my STL. All right, friends. So, of course, you could bring that grid just into Cura, but check this out as well. If you go into Tinkercad, you can choose Import, Choose File, and then I've got my 3D modeling folder, and that little file is right here, and I called it Beetle. Notice it's still got the 17 by 205 by 2 millimeters. Hit import, and after just a little bit of rendering, that crazy, awesome, difficult project is in Tinkercad. Now, when you click import, this still is a complex part, so you do need to wait for the Tinkercad meshing system to actually bring that in and turn it into something we can play with. We don't really get to edit, but it is really easy to add things to it. And there we have it, it has arrived. Notice it is larger than the grid, that's real easy to fix. I'm gonna just change the width to 230. I do note that I always have to backspace, then type the number, update the grid, and it fits in here. And now we can still move around and we can add parts to this. I'm gonna set the work plane up on top. You can see I can easily bring these in, adjust, make all the pegs that would make this project what you really wanted it to be, but now you're working in Tinkercad and you've got one piece instead of that big heavy part uh, from all the things we were grouping before. All right, friends, so there you have it, <laughs> using two different programs to make one cool object. Both of them free, both of them run in a browser so you don't have to install, which I think is pretty darn awesome. If Tinkercad ever adds that distribute thing, oh my gosh, that is such a slick tool. Still would have been crazy complex because anytime you have 2,000 parts in Tinkercad, you're asking a lot of a web-based tool. Alrighty, friends, so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.